video. Today we are going to have a complete heating system for under $250. So I've got everything you need here to have an Olympian Camco. I ordered it all from, um, from uh, Amazon and you can get all this and, and I'll show you exactly how to assemble it for $250 and it's what I recommend. And now, most of you are probably going to go out and buy a Mr. Buddy portable heater. And they're, gr they're good heaters, and right now they're $69 on Amazon, so this is a lot more. This heater is $149. But man, I've had a, I know a lot of people that have had them break, and you have to buy the filter, and you have to buy this, of course you have to buy a hose no matter what. So, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm just not going to recommend them anymore because I've had too many of them break. Uh, what I'm, I see now that what's happening is Mr. Heater is putting out a little assembly to replace the pilot light assembly uh, and for like 30 bucks. And they break so often that if you, they don't put it out, people throwing them away or they're returning them. Um, and so they're now offering a solution. And so it might be cheaper to buy a Mr. Buddy and put, figure on just rebuilding it, repairing it every so often. Um, but... The Camco Olympian, which is a, on sale right now for 150, it's regular 229 on Amazon, and you can has been on sale for 179, and then it went on sale for 149, and I bought one because that is such a good price. The the uh, it's a true catalytic heater, and it puts out less heat. And you think, well, Bob, that's bad. No, it's not. If you live in a van, the Mr. Buddy is too much heat. You put it on low and it's on for 15 minutes and you're too hot. So you put it on low and in 15 minutes it's too hot. And you think to yourself, man, it's really hot in here. And then you turn it off and then it gets too cold. And so you turn it back on and then it gets too hot and then you turn it off and then you, and you, you chase the temperature around. I have found this heater on low uh, to be perfect in a vehicle the size of a van. And on high, it will cover you even if you don't if it's not insulated even if it's really cold now if you are living in an extremely cold place then maybe this mr buddy would be better uh, but i don't think so i think this is the heater the camco let me get this thing open for you i'll do a, an opening while we're talking uh, this is the camco olympian catalytic wave 3 heater I, uh, I've told you I lived in Alaska for six years in a box van in Anchorage, Alaska. 30 below was routine. I routinely saw 30 below and I used this heater and it is ideal. This is the ideal heater for living in a van. It's catalytic. Now what does that mean, catalytic? It's, it doesn't heat, doesn't create heat with, uh, with a flame. It creates heat with a chemical reaction. So once you started it and had it going, there's no more flame. It is strictly a chemical reaction between the platinum on the rug, and it kind of literally has a rug on it. So you're seeing a brand new out of the box, and there's a chemical reaction. It's that, that rug is embedded with platinum, and the platinum reacts with the propane and then the, that chemical reaction creates heat. I don't know how much you can see that. But there's a chemical reaction. But you can see here held on my chest, this is a very small uh, unit. This is about 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. And you can see it's just about a little smaller than the size of the unit. So this is a very small unit. Now, this does not come with legs. It has holes to mount on, it has holes back here to mount on a wall or a door or a piece of plywood and then you can mount the plywood to anything. And I bought the legs. Olympian sells a set of legs. Wave Eater leg stand set. This will go for, I believe any of the, uh, it does. It'll work the Wave 3, the Wave 6, and the Wave 8. This is the Wave 3. That means it's 3,000 BTUs on high, 1,600 on low. Uh, the Wave 6 is 6,000 on high. The Wave 8 is 8,000 BTUs on high. When I lived in Alaska, I owned all three. So it just has a set of legs that uh, screw in 
to the bottom. So you screw the legs in down here. So you just screw the legs into the bottom and then it'll stand on its own. Oh, uh, and it's got, uh, this is a, uh, a template. So you screw, you put this on your piece of plywood or whatever you want to put it on, a door, a wall. You drill the screws through here and put in a, uh, you must put in a screw, it probably comes with them. You drive the screw, the pan head screw in, and then it hangs on the pan head screw. Uh, and now here, this is the single most important thing on any heater. This, the, the owner's manual. Every propane burning device will kill you. Every one of them, 100% of them are, are deadly if not installed properly. So when you get this manual, you get this thing out and you study it really closely and really well. And there will be two critical things that it will tell you. It will tell you the amount of ventilation required and it will tell you the amount of clearances, ventilation and clearances. And if you install this according to the requirements of the, in, of the clearances and ventilation, this thing is 100% safe. Now, why do I say it's 100% safe? Because if it was unsafe, if it was installed properly and it killed people, I'm not, I don't believe in the goodness of the company, that they care about their customers. That's, that's a stretch of a leap of faith I can't make. But what I do believe in is the greed of lawyers. I have 100% faith in the greed of lawyers. And if this product killed people, even if it was installed properly, then the lawyers would have destroyed this company. They'd have eaten them eaten it alive like a shark or, or like piranhas. Uh, there'd be nothing left of this company but the bones. So I have complete confidence in the greed of lawyers. And if you follow the instructions in this manual, you give it enough ventilation and enough clearances, this product is 100% safe inside your van. It's just that simple. Because if it wasn't, the piranha sharks would have eaten it alive and there'd be nothing left but a carcass. And it's a healthy growing company, uh, still selling products, that means it's safe. Okay, so I don't know if I can get this close enough that you can see it. Right here, it says air supply. It has very clear, specific instructions on what you have to have as an air supply. Ventilation. Now, in a van, or a car, or an SUV, if you open the two front windows a quarter of an inch, you will be completely safe. You will have provided enough ventilation because those windows are very wide. The window on this van is probably two feet long. So if you open the two front windows half an inch, uh, you have plenty of ventilation. You will be completely safe. It gives you a, a, it wants 24 square inches. That's the bottom line. You have to give this 24 square inches. So if it's 24 inches long and you open it half an inch, that's 12 inches. You open the both, you get a cross flow, you're good. You have followed what it said. And clearances are here. Clearances from combustible materials. See that? So it says right here. Clearances from combustible materials. If you give it those clearances, the heater will be completely safe. And it says four inches from each side, 18 inches from the top, 30 inches from the front, zero from the rear. It can be flush up against anything. Uh, the 30 inches from the front is the hard part. And if you're in a car, you have to have 30 inches from here out. Let me. That's 30 inches out to right where my little finger is. That's 30 inches. You got to give it that much clearance. Four inches on the side, 18 inches on the front. Most of you will buy a five gallon tank, which is double this size. I wanted the small and the low height. This fits under my bed. So I bought a two and a half gallon Manchester tank. These are expensive because they don't sell them in volume. They're expensive. And so here's what you buy to double it. This is a Y, see? This one screws into the tank. This is a Camco hose regulator for designed specifically for this. So the Y right here, which I'm gonna allows me to put the two devices on the one tank, costs me $14 and the hose cost me 28. So the hose and the regulator was $28.
The heater was $149 and the legs were $12.49 for a grand sum total of $203.70. That's what I bought right now and if you go tomorrow as, as soon as this comes out this is still on sale for $149 you will pay $203 for the heater, the hose, the regulator, the Y splitter and that's all. You're getting those four items. If you already have a tank, you'll have to, if you don't have a tank, you'll have to go buy one. If you buy a five gallon tank, 20 pound, uh, go to Walmart or go to Home Depot, it's going to be around $30, $40. If you buy a small one like this, uh, this one is a lot more expensive. This is probably $65, although it's half, literally half the size. And so uh, that's what I bought. So what you do is you, you screw this in. Got to screw in the splitter. Splitters, uh, when they have this black thing on it, or in this case it's this green thing, they're a lot easier to work with because propane tanks are reversed. The threads are reversed, but this kind this unreverses it, and that's kind of nice. So there's that. And now I will put this in. This goes to this is the hose that goes to my stove. So I'm going to have both appliances hooked up at once. This goes in here. These are finger tight only. And then let's get this out. This again is the Camco regulator. This is all you need to buy. This is the whole thing and this was $28. It includes the regulator and the hose. Uh, how long is this hose? It's 12 foot. So these are both on And then the other end of this goes in to the Olympium. And you have to do something called Teflon tape. Uh, I bought this at Walmart. They call it thread seal tape. It's just this white tape. Um, nearly universally it's called Teflon tape as far as I know. And uh, this was a dollar for two of them. And this is what you almost always put on threads just to make sure that it will not leak. It's almost universal and I'm no expert on using it. So let's just put that on there. And you just kind of wrap it around. You try not to bunch it. Now, I'm no expert on this. A lot of you people who do this a lot will watch me doing this and write in and tell me how badly I'm doing this but that's the best I can do and then you just stretch it and pull it taut and there it goes and I probably should have done it the other way I just to be honest with you I don't do this enough to know what the best way is okay and then it would go it would just be just screwed down so so once you've got the Teflon tape on it then you just thread it on. This is a 3 8 inch flared nut. And I'm not a plumber, but I know that's a com a nearly universal. And then uh, just the channel locks, just standard old channel locks. You do uh, hand tighten this. I mean, you use a tool to tighten this. You just grab it and... <clears throat> that's about as tight as I'm going to get it with that. And that's it! If I had the legs on it, I would uh, I would just sit this down, or if I were mounting it on a wall, that's it. It's all done. I would follow the instructions to start it the first time, and away I'd go. And you're done. Um, the two appliances are hooked up, and then the hose will come out from here. Just uh, standard way you connect this. I'm not going to do it because I have to undo it to put it away. And then this is connected. And this is connected and they can both be used at once. And that's it. I would turn it on and now I would light, I can light either one of them because they're both attached to this for $203. Let me, so that's it. It's, it's really a good way to go. It's very simple. You just watch me do it in every single step. It's just a matter of taking a hose and screwing it in. It's really that simple. The one warning I would give you is this rug. I don't know how well you can see that rug. Uh, requires, absolutely requires, that it be dust-free. 
if you're in a dusty place, which I am always in a dusty place, uh, you'll want to keep this covered, unless it's on and burning, you'll want to keep this covered at all times. Okay, it's got, you'll want to keep it covered at all times. One of the questions you're all going to have, is it safe to put a propane bottle inside my van, my car, my whatever? And I will tell you unequivocally, it is not safe. This will kill you. You will be dead within a minutes of you putting this inside your van. It's a certain. All the safety rules, everyone who knows anything about safety will tell you that it must not be inside your van. That's the standard rule, and that's what I'm telling you too. This must not be inside your van. You must not. I am forbidding you from putting this inside your van. Now, I put this inside my van. I've lived in a vehicle for 15 years, and every minute of those 15 years, there was a propane tank inside my vehicle with me. If you do it, you will die. It is an absolute certainty because the safety experts say so, and they're always right. I can do it for whatever reason, I don't know why, but if you do it, you will die. You'll be dead within the hour if you put this tank inside your, your vehicle. I have always had one inside my vehicle. I will always have one. From now on, if I'm living in a vehicle, there will be a propane tank inside it, a refillable propane tank, either a one gallon, two and a half gallon, or five gallon. So. That's it. I will stop there and just tell you that all these, there will be a link to all of these in the description. So if you got anything out of this video, if, uh, if you liked it, uh, if it inspired you, and I hope it did, or educated you, and that's my goal in everything I do to inspire and educate or entertain. If nothing else, you just thought, what a lunatic, what a loser to live that way. Uh, if I, even if I just entertained you uh, with my lunacy, my brand of lunacy. Uh, like me on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you later down the road, my friends.